Hello, and welcome to another episode of Dig Deep, the geological center. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to use this tool. This is a geological rocket launcher. Currently, I'm here in Zimbabwe, and I'm working on an orogenic gold project called the Dockware Project. And uh, we are doing a lot of structural measurements and core, but sadly, over the last few days, we've had torrential rain all the time. So I've taken some time away from logging to show you guys how to use this tool. So let's get stuck in. Before using a geological rocket launcher, there are some things that you need to set up first in order to get the most accurate results out of it. But before we get into that, this is what I'm gonna be measuring today. It's a real treat. This is a piece of gold nugget shared and into this porphyry rock. And this is what we're looking for here in the Dockware project. Pretty amazing, right? So let's get a measurement out of that. And before you can use a rocket launcher, I must say that um, a rocket launcher can only be used on orientated core. This is where the diamond core has been marked during the drilling process to show the core's original positioning ground. A specially trained team work alongside the drilling contractors to mark the drill core with a bottom of hole orientation line. Arrows on the orientation line point downwards towards the bottom of the drill hole. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set this uh, rocket launcher up in its actual geometric position so that we can measure the gold bearing quartz vein or gold bearing vein and that will give us an understanding of how it was geometrically positioned. So first things first, we need a compass and I highly recommend a compass with a spirit level bubble like this one and one hopefully with a clinometer and a nice easy to move wheel. A smartphone with a structural geological app can also be used as long as you get accurate reliable readings to take dip and strike measurements. No problem using smartphones, they're all good, but I prefer to use a good old fashioned Clino compass. Looking at this setup, the first thing you'll note that the rocket launcher itself is made out of wood and so is my workbench. And the reason why this all needs to be made out of wood is to prevent any magnetic interference with the compass during the setup of the launcher uh, and also when taking measurements. So any ferrous objects need to be kept away from the workbench and the rocket launcher itself uh, to help getting the most accurate reading from your compass. So without getting too close, as you can see, as I get closer with the camera to the compass, it affects, it affects it. So be very careful with mobile phones in your pocket and anything like that. It can really have an effect on your readings. So just gonna double check that, move the camera away. The first step in setting up your rocket launcher is setting up the dip or the inclination in which the drill hole was drilled. So this specific hole was drilled at 70 degrees. However, if you have detailed downhole survey data for your drill hole, it is worth using this data for setting up the dip according to the depth of the sample within the hole. As the drill hole is being drilled, the drill string will deviate in various directions depending on the geology, the rotation direction, and how much pressure is being placed uh, on the drill string by the driller. So from the survey data for this particular hole, I can see that the dip has only changed by about 1.3 degrees um, for the current position or, or the downhole position of this piece of core at around about 105 meters. So I will keep my dip at 70 degrees. However, had this sample come from near the bottom of this particular hole at 340 meters, the dip changed by about 10 degrees so I would then set the rocket launcher at 60 degrees rather than 70. This will help me get a far more accurate reading. So I'm just going to put my camera down there quick to show you guys how I set the dip. So there's a, a little screw here. And first of all, what I need to do is just set my compass. 
so that my clinometer gives me a reading so there you can see is my clinometer and I can measure 70 degrees off that so what I do is I put the compass the long axis of the compass on the cradle I loosen the screw it's a bit tight this one I will now set the bearing to which the hole was drilled. This is the magnetic azimuth, 310 degrees to the northwest. If the directional data you are working with is in UTM, which most softwares use, you will then need to correct this by accounting for the magnetic declination according to the location where this specific drill hole was drilled. So for example, here in Zimbabwe, the magnetic declination we use is minus 9.4 degrees. So we need to make a minus 9.4 correction to our UTM data. The declination of any location around the world can be found quite easily, just from a simple Google search. I recommend a website called magneticdeclination.com. Again, as with the dip variation downhole, I can use my downhole survey data to make further adjustments to the azimuth measurements based on any deviation within the drill hole path during drilling. So at 105 meters in this particular hole, there is a 2.1 degree difference in the azimuth bearing. So if I wanted to, uh, and get a more accurate measurement, I can reset my launcher to 308 degrees, or roughly 309 degrees. Uh, and this will also help get a little bit more accurate data. So from my survey data, you can see there that the survey readings or the intervals have been every six meters. This is really good survey data. Normally, uh, you would expect something along the lines of 50 meters or 25 meters. Um, more modern day gyro technology allows you to take more regular readings um, and six meter intervals is excellent data. So um, that's really helpful, especially when you're drilling deep holes and you can then monitor the variation uh, and the deviation of your holes. This is particularly important in, um, in resource drilling. If you've got two resource holes and your hole deviates towards uh, a hole that's already been drilled, that's almost just wasting money. First of all, we're going to set the azimuth. And what I do is I set this line here, where the red arrow is, to 320, which is the magnetic direction this hole was drilled. Like that, 320. And I will place that on my instrument and now I need to rotate the rocket launcher so that the north arrows line up. So the first thing I'm going to do is place thy compass here along the long axis of the rocket launcher and now I'm going to rotate my compass um, after setting the whole um, azimuth to 320. I'm now going to rotate my compass so that the red part of the needle is aligned with north. Got to be careful not to get my camera too close to the compass as it may interfere but that should be about right so once you're happy you've set up the um, bearing you want to make sure that you set up your spirit level to make sure that your compass and your workbench and your rocket launcher are all sitting flat. 
as you can see my spirit level bubble there is spot on a little bit out maybe half a degree or so but I think that's pretty acceptable so that is it now that the rocket launcher is properly set up uh, in the right um, bearing in which the drill hole was drilled and also the right uh, inclination uh, I'm ready to now take some structural measurements so my piece of drill core with the orientation line and the arrows pointing down is very carefully placed in the groove in the cradle so that I can see the or make sure that the orientation line sits within the groove and now I have the original geometric position that this core was drilled in and I can simply just take measurements using my clono compass now by resetting the compass in a way that I can measure the dip azimuth and the actual dip itself. So when you're doing structural measurements and drill core, it's not the same as when you're taking measurements in the field where you take dip and strike measurements. For structural readings on drill core, we want the dip azimuth and the dip itself of the structure you're reading. From this angle, you can't really see. I'm gonna move you guys over so you can see where the structure is now sitting. So the structure is coming in at an angle like this. So what I want to do is get a good reading. So setting my compass in the dip direction. And I'm getting about a reading of 230. So the dip direction of that structure is 230 and it's a steeply dipping structure. So again, reset my compass to east-west and, and then I can get a dip of that structure. And it's dipping at about 80 degrees. If I just move it, my... yeah. So the gold that is smeared along the fracture itself here, that is dipping at about 80 degrees. The, the red staining, the iron staining does vary a little bit, maybe around about 270 degrees. let's measure that again yep 80 degrees I'm happy with that so that is now the geometric position of this drill core and that is a, a nice accurate reading and a good understanding of where and how this was positioned in the ground before it was drilled and brought to surface so there you have it that is how you use a geological rocket launcher to measure structural features in diamond drill core or should I add orientated diamond drill core and hopefully that is a very helpful video for you guys so let me know what you guys think thank you for watching